Hi, Rick from Dreamside Out. Well, I'm sitting here trying to shoot a video competing with the bird sounds. Every time I turn on my camera, the bird starts squawking so loud I can't hear myself think. That's one of the one of the issues you run into when you make YouTube videos. You just, you know, you shoot about 20 things for every one thing that makes it. But anyway, in, in light of that, what I've been doing is going back and, and looking over my uh, archive footage that I have. Uh, lots of things that I've never published, never shown to anybody. A whole year's worth of stuff. And it's amazing how stuff much stuff has piled up over a year. Um, I found some early footage of the van build <clears throat> when I was actually doing the insulation part. And I think this might be helpful to people who are contemplating... Uh, getting into the van life and also if you're gonna get a box truck this is how I did it so I hope you enjoy Okay, so we're looking inside the box from the back door. I just rolled up the back door there. You'll see I got a lot of stuff in here because I have started to purchase the materials to do the conversion with. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm gonna do is probably do, put some insulation and on the walls. Um, these walls are made of fiberglass plywood. It's a sandwich of plywood with a layer of fiberglass on each side. I think that the thickness of the plywood is a 3 8 inch and it's one continuous piece. So it's probably some kind of marine plywood or something that they use especially for these boxes. And it's attached to these structural pieces at the top with, with rivets through and there's a there's this extruded uh, or th this is an actual extrusion. There's, there's a structural piece all the way across here of metal, aluminum, and then there's a, a, a cast aluminum corner piece that goes in there. And I noticed that uh, one point, one thing I did notice when I was inspecting it closely is that there's a couple of rivets that have a little rust, meaning there's probably some moisture coming through from the outside right there, so I might have to seal that up a little bit. Um, but what I plan to do is, uh, I'm going to take these strips of wood. I took these uh, some cheap two by fours and just uh, milled them down on a table saw to the same thickness as this particular insulation material that I'm going to use. I'll go into more detail on all this as I as I get into it. But I just wanted to do this initial walk around so you can see the van before anything happens to it. There you can probably see on camera where I've drawn the the door opening cut out there that I'm going to have. And that's going to really, um, once I get that done, I, I actually feel like I could probably live in the van just with that door cut out. Because all I need is to put a you know, cotton sleeping bag in here and it's pretty much ready to go. <laughs> but I'm, I plan on putting a few more things in it. My, my reason for having a, a van like this is because uh, I want to be able to stand up in it. That's one of, my, one of my criteria for having a van. I wanted to be able to stand up. I, I don't think I would be comfortable living in a regular size van where I'd have to stoop down all the time. And I know people are doing it and I know they, they make these very comfortable living spaces out of small vans and that's really cool. But I just, I just, after a lot of thought on the subject, I realized that I just really want to be able to stand up. <laughs> so uh, that's what I, why I built it this way. And I think that, you know, there's enough room to stand up here so I could put, you know, I can actually put some floor covering with insulation on the floor as well because it's just a plywood floor. And uh, even I'm standing on two layers of two by fours right now and I still can, uh, clear the ceiling with the door up 
and there's plenty of room with the with the door without the door the one drawback of having this roll-up door is that it, it covers a lot of the ceiling area so it, let's see if I wanted to put some sort of fireplace with a chimney in it I'd be limited as to where I could put that in here but I'll work all that out as I go along I think uh, I'm very excited about this because I'm finally getting going on it. This has been something that has been, I've been thinking about for months and months and months. And when I got on YouTube and talked to, I mean, well, I didn't talk to anybody, but I listened to a lot of people who are doing the, the van life. And that was quite affirming, quite uh, inspiring, actually. Listen to everybody else who's doing it. So I, I, I want to... I say that I appreciate all of the affirmation and encouragement that I've gotten. I was one of those silent uh, viewers that didn't participate in the whole thing, but now I'm ready to jump in and and participate and be part of the part of the whole thing. Okay, so I'm I'm going forward with cutting the hole in the bulkhead right now. That's the first modification I'm going to make on this thing. Uh, what I'm doing here is drilling little holes in the corners here where I've outlined the door opening. Then I'm going to use my saber saw and just saw out the hole. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to run the film while I'm doing it, but anyway, here we go. Here I am. I, uh, I did it. I cut through the door and I'm kind of it was really difficult. I burned up the saw blade. There it is laying in the sawdust there. That is rough on saw blades. It's fiberglass uh, plywood. And I'm, I'm glad to see that this, this plywood is much thicker than I thought. It's like it's at least half inch thick. And it's very tight laminated plywood. It looks like good plywood. And that's a, you know, two real good layers of fiberglass and gel coat on each side. It's pretty tough. And, uh, boy, that, that was not easy sawing through there. <laughs> That's really, you know, the, the, saw, the second saw blade got uh, dull almost halfway through the cut down one of the sides. And I just made it work. It's kind of burned through some of it, but it's a little rough around the edges, literally. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, fix that with some finishing material that I'll put on. But that, that's nice to know because I have more meat to bolt to when I when I tie into the, the sidewalls with other other things. So anyway, that's uh, the first step. It's actually now livable. I mean, that one modification makes it so I could just throw a cot in here and sleep in here at night if I want. <laughs> also, I'm I'm, all, I'm really essentially there but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do a few more things to it to make it a little more comfortable I'm zooming in here on the bottom of the cut um, you can see that u-haul has a little uh, safety box that they have here with a bunch of stuff in it that you put on the road if you're in an emergency situation and I thought about taking that out I was looking at it and they got it riveted right through the floor I thought gosh I'm gonna have to drill that thing out and get rid of it and then I thought why take it out? Why not just leave it right there? <laughs> you know? Because uh, I don't mind cutting this high so I can step over it. In fact, I can step through it really comfortably. It really makes a fairly decent step through the size here. So anyway, I'll start with that. If I find that I need more room, I can always modify it further if I need to. But that's the way it's going to be for now. So what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, putting these furring strips here around the opening so that I can uh, then it'll be spaced out enough for this insulation. These strips of wood here are exactly the same thickness as the insulation you see. And uh, so I'm just going to go around the perimeter of the, of the door and all around the edges and, <clears throat> and put those on. And I, I'm attaching them with uh, you know, these little uh, screws that are kind of finish screws but they're inch and a half screws and if, as you see here they go just uh, get my camera under there they stab right into the 
the plywood just right so it doesn't go all the way through and if I'm careful I I can uh, you know screw it down tight before it comes out the other side so that's the that's the idea so anyway I'm gonna go all the way around that and I'm starting just with this this bulkhead right here and then when I when I get this uh, all furred around with these strips then I'm gonna put that piece of uh, insulation on and I'm just gonna tape it on and then over the top of that, I'm planning to put some thin plywood, eighth inch birch plywood. That's going to be the interior covering for this. Okay, this is just a little uh, progress report on where I'm at so far on the conversion of the van and the work that I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm going around the edges and putting furring strips up all the way around. I think I may have talked about this in one of my earlier video segments. <clears throat> but as you see, I've got that side pretty well done. I may have to put a couple more vertical ones where the, the plywood ends. Because you know, I'm going to run an 8 foot sheet out to about, oh, probably around there. Uh, I'm just starting on this side. First thing I'm going to do is take these existing uh, railings off of the U-Haul truck. They have these spacers in between here that are make this whole thing come out about an inch and a half. I need it to be at exactly one inch. So I'm taking these out. What I've done is I've cut a bunch of little spacers and I'm gonna replace those with these spacers. And then I've got some different bolts that I put through. Uh, I'll show you over here. I got these bolt heads with a washer because I want to keep the I, wanna, I don't want to lose the location of these bolts. I want them to be exposed in the final build because I may want to use those for something. Like for right here, for instance, I've put an eye bolt in this one, and these are going to be hooks for my hammock. I can hang a hammock diagonally across uh, either way in this. It's very nice having a hammock in here. I, I just uh, I learned that the first day I got the thing. but <clears throat> So I'm going to make use of that. Anyway, so my, my work is cut out for me here tonight. I'm going to uh, just, I'm doing a little bit each day. I'm going to uh, do uh, this side, and then when I get all that done, I'm going to, you know, go ahead and, and apply the rest of the insulation like I've been doing. It's this one-inch insulation. It goes against the wall, and I'm just taping it on with the metal tape. And then I have some backing with these strips to nail plywood to when I'm done. It actually goes together pretty easy. It looks like it's uh, complicated, but it's not. It's a very relaxing and easy task. So, um, and, I, and I'm using just my little Japanese saw to cut these sticks down and make them fit. And it's just, you know, I can go pretty fast. I, I actually just, within an hour's worth of time, I can get a, quite a bit done. So anyway, I'll, uh, that's where I'm at the well, I hope my archived clips on how I insulated my U-Haul truck were helpful. I think it's very simple if you do it right. Uh, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there on the subject of insulation, and I think you owe it to yourself if you're going out into this van-dwelling journey uh, to get some accurate information. Don't just listen to people like me or people on YouTube because there's a lot of misinformation out there. I've seen it, especially from vendors. You know, they're going to tell you what you want to hear so they can sell you a product. Uh, here's what you can do. Here's what I did. Go to the MIT website. I'm putting a link down there to it. Go to the MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology just click on the link that has uh, for the course on thermodynamics. Don't be blown away by that word. It's not that big of a deal. You can understand it. Just sit there and listen to some of the basic lectures on thermodynamics and get a grasp of how heat transfer works. Because that's what insulation is all about. That's what you're working about with. You're trying to reduce heat transfer and just understand what that is because it's it's doable you you can do it you can make you can 
you can spend a lot of time insulating your van and doing a bad job and it won't work and you'll get condensation and everything in your van or you can spend a, the same amount of time doing it right and it'll <laughs> pay off because you'll save money and you'll have a comfortable environment to sleep in so i recommend doing it right and just by first getting the knowledge and a grasp of what you're doing with that you can do it it's it's easy to do really you just got to put in the time uh, I, I hope this was helpful uh, thanks for watching I'm gonna dig through some more of my archives and see what else I have in there so appreciate it <laughs>